Thank you for registering. Uh, thank you for your attendance today. I'm pleased to see the turnout. And you know, so we appreciate the support. Um, one quick note before we start. Um, wanted to tell uh, if you have any questions during the, the presentations, uh, please. In the top of your screen, you should have a Q&A function. Uh, or you can send it through the chat. We'll collect those questions and then. At the end of the of the session, we will get to them and address them accordingly. Uh, so your microphones will be muted throughout. So please utilize the chat function. And and or the Q&A section on the top of your on the top bar for any questions. So um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the presentation. I'm going to share my screen. For the for this month of uh, June, we have chosen to highlight Hayfley's uh, WA 2293, or the um, which what we like to call our our Swiss Army knife of transformer testing. Now, why Swiss Army knife? Well, if you're familiar with Swiss Army knives, they're high quality multifunction tools. You know, usually has a knife, uh, a, a corkscrew, screwdriver, can opener, just a whole bunch of functions that, you know, anybody who uses it can can rely. And they can feel comfortable that you know and rely on their performance. And so, the 2293 is quite similar. Uh, with this Swiss-made high-quality instrument, testing engineers and technicians can go on site or at the factory and perform these tests on power and distribution transformers and they can rely on the accuracy that the measurements uh, the accuracy of the measurements that the 2293 offers like i said it's an automatic winding analyzer it's optimized to perform routine and maintenance tests on power and distribution transformers three phase and single phase so um, getting into some of the features, we like I just mentioned, uh, this is a all-in-one solution. We'll try to show how the one-time connection system, uh, coupled with this the unique simultaneous mag uh, winding mag uh, magnetization method, will speed up measurements uh, compared to traditional uh, winding resistance. Uh, instruments and other instruments uh, sort of like uh, turns ratio uh, meters and, and that. So we'll also you'll see uh, we'll talk about how this is fully touch screen has a seven inch uh, touch screen interface. So we eliminate the use of buttons, switches, selection wheels. It's based off of a Windows application and you have uh, data entry is possible with a full keyboard, so you don't have to. It's really intuitive. It's very familiar. Um, also, uh, features for portability. Uh, the, the 2293 comes in a rugged Pelican case, so it's suitable for field use, but it could also be used at the factory or in a lab. Uh, we do have uh, the option of the built in printer, or you can save your test uh, setups and your measurement results and export them to a USB stick, uh, which will generate a CSV file with all the data for that particular test setup and measurement results. And also, with uh, you can also use a USB stick to import uh, setups that you may have on one 2293. And take it over to the next one, so you don't have to go go through the process of setting up a measurement from zero. So those are just some of the features. Now, uh, I want to get into uh, all the function, all the features that are what we like to call applications that uh, are offered with our winding analyzer, our 2293. So, with the 2293, you you will have applications for resistance. You'll have applications for terms ratio. 
as as well as uh, this transformer detection, which we'll talk about that, which is related to the turns ratio function. You'll be you'll have the ability to measure your resistance for arbitrarily phase transformers that don't follow the the 30 degree clock notation uh, phase displacements. You have a uh, our unique uh, DMAG. Uh, DMAG function, which will demagnetize the core after your resistance measurements. And also magnetic balance can be uh, measured as, as, as well as heat rise, cooling curve. We have a great option for tap changers and options for complete and automatic tap changer uh, resistance measurements. And finally, you will be able to do short circuit impedance. Uh, measurements with the 2293. Standard with the instrument, we have three applications. You'll have resistance, uh, the winding resistance application comes standard. Your DMAG function is also standard with the instrument. And also the cooling curve uh, function is standard with the, with the instrument. All the other applications uh, can be chosen. You can choose to purchase the instrument with it already pre-installed uh, or activated and then um, or you can purchase the instrument standard and later on choose if you need a specific application you can uh, purchase a an activation key to enable those applications so getting into the instrument per se um so we have the first, we have as you can you can tell it's a pretty simple like i said no not no buttons the only button we have is the emergency stop so it's very it's very clean very uh, simple first you have i want to get into the top right here uh, the top left where you have your connectors this is where you'll connect your your cables for your high and your low voltage um Connectors are twist lock, so so you plug quarter twist and they're secure. Um, right on right under the connections, you have an LED indications which will turn green when the instrument is safe, and it will turn red when the instrument is supplying power to the device under test. Um, underneath that, we have the IOs. We have six temperature probe uh, channels internal, and then we'll have one IO for your, your tap changer and one, and one that is reserved for an extension of temperature uh, probes. So with the extension, you can connect up to 30 temperature sensors um, to the instrument. And we'll get into how that's done uh, shortly. Um, down here, uh, item six, you have your main power cable input with your power switch. Then next to that is the seven inch touchscreen interface. We have your emergency stop button, which will completely uh, de-energize the, the unit once it's pressed. And then right above the touchscreen, you have your integrated printer and your USB ports for your importing and exporting and the ethernet uh, port uh, so you can connect the instrument to a computer or a laptop. So that's a basic rundown of the front panel of the instrument. Now we're gonna talk a bit about the one-time connection system. So with the one-time connection system, once you place the clamps, all the phases and the windings will be tested simultaneously. So these uh, Kelvin clamps are optimized, which means that each clamp has two halves. One half will do the voltage or potential, and this, the other half will do the current measurement. So, and they're completely isolated one from the other. So basically you have on each phase and all in both windings, uh, connected all at the same time, being energized at the same time, which goes into play with, uh, into play when this simultaneous uh, winding magnetization system. 
So uh, going with the again with the one time connection system, what you have is you you have your instrument and with a standard with the instrument, you'll get your measuring cables. You have one set of measuring cables that have red clamps for your high voltage. Each clamp is labeled H uh, zero to H three. On, on clamp side and on the other end, they are color coded for each connection. Same with the low voltage side, you'll have four clamps uh, labeled X0 to X1, X3, and on the other side, a color coding that will match the spider, what we call the spider cables, which are the adapters for the uh, input to the instrument. Each adapter has the same color coding, so basically there's very little uh, possibility of having connection errors when connecting your measuring cables to the instrument. The spider cable is also uh, has a label at the connector, at the twist lock connector, red or black, that will correspond to the connector on the instrument. So again, minimizing the chances of mixing up uh, or doing a, having an error in connections. In this graphic, you'll also notice these extension cables the extension cables, if you're going to be testing uh, large transformers with high, with large bushings, you can choose to um, you can choose to get the extension cables, which will give you an extra 10 meters. So with the instrument, you'll be getting, when you buy the 2293, you'll be getting the 2293, you'll be getting your eight measuring cables, which are standard 10 meter length, then all of this comes in a in a cable bag. You can start so you can store your cables. Um, also, you'll you'll get a te uh, test certificate from the factory, verifying its calibration and a manual, so that uh, so that if you have any questions, you can refer to the manual. Um, and then after that, there's also some additional accessories, but we'll get to that after I explain how we do the connection setup. So for a three phase transformer, it's pretty straightforward. Once you have your measuring cables connected to the instrument, all you have to do is go to your transformer and place them accordingly. X, uh, you can do your, your phase bushings and then your neutrals. Just connect all the cables to your bushings and you're done. You, there's no need to, uh, to switch connections between tests. Um, basically, the, once you get once you connect it, you can forget about uh, doing any type of reconnections. Um, the instrument is also able to do uh, measurements on single phase transformers. And with the single phase transformers, what you do is you just connect your X0 and your X1 for your low voltage or your H0 or H1 for your high voltage. And then you just leave the other two, the other cables disconnected. And you can go ahead and do your single phase transformer measurements. And then additionally, uh, for for resistance measurements, you can also the unit also can operate as a traditional or classic Kelvin four wire resistance. So you can basically measure the resistance of just about any object um, with these with the twenty two ninety three as well. Like I mentioned, we also have. Uh, Options and accessories we have uh, we can offer temperature probes for liquids, the magnetic temperature probe for uh, measuring tank temperatures. You can put it on the main tank or the radiator, for example. Uh, we do have and all of that. Go, you can combine that with your with the temperature extension box, and this is where you would uh, connect additional up to 30 temperature probes so you can have uh, a full outlook on your on your temperature readings. Also for the tap changer or for your tap changer control, we do offer a remote tap changer operation cable. And so this would basically get connected to any transformer with a motorized uh, tap changer and it will give automatic signals to change to move up or down the taps. So that's really uh, handy. Um, when it comes so you don't have uh, people 
close to the transformer during a test, you can have them further out and automatically change your tabs. So when you, when you uh, power on your 2293, your, the touchscreen interface is basically, this is your, what, what would be your main screen. And the main screen is divided in four sections. Uh, we have the, the top, uh, uh, the top bar, which is where you will define your device under test. You have your bottom bar, which will give you all your functions to start or stop a, a test or move your taps up or down and do your setups for each uh, measurement. And then we have the sidebar, which controls which application you will be utilizing for uh, which application will be on the active window display. Um, so with the when you hit so when you hit your file button here, basically in your file once you hit your file button, you're gonna have these all these options. You can start a new measurement from scratch, or you can start a new measurement but based on uh, an actual measurement that's already been done. So that kind of speeds up the process if you already have, uh, for example, the uh, same one same configuration. You can base a new measurement on an actual one. Also, you can load, upload, or, or load from the internal memory any uh, past uh, measurement that you have done. Uh, you can save or save to a USB stick. This is where you'll be able to save uh, the measurements and or delete them. And finally, if you decide to export your, your results, you can hit the export button and you can actually choose all the parameters and all the tests that you uh, want to have on your spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet. And you choose over here whether you want to save it, you want to export it to right to the unit, or you can click USB stick and have it exported to your USB stick. So before you, before you start any test, it's very important that you gather all the information that you have on your device. Um, it's very handy to have uh, nameplate data for your transformer. It will speed up the process of defining your, your device. So basically you'll use the top bar to do to select your high voltage winding, whether it's a star config, uh, configuration, a delta, star with neutral, whether it's single phase. So you can choose your primary configuration, your secondary configuration. You can choose your phase displacement uh, according to your according to the clock notation. It'll be you know anywhere from zero to to eleven. And then once you select your phase shift, and if you have a tertiary winding on your transformer, you can select the configuration on that winding as well. So very important that you that this is the first step before you start any uh, any measurement. It'll help uh, with the with the speed with the process of testing, and it'll help. When you go to export your results, you don't have to go back and put in all that information. So when you go ahead and and set up your your device, you'll have these these tabs. You you can choose under your type tab. You can choose you can enter the serial number of the transformer, and you can give it a name or the type of transformer. Um, you also have the option if you have a tap changer to put the serial number of the tap changer and the driver number. One, if you click on the specification tab, this is where you will define your taps. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. And you will also enter your information on your what the nominal voltage on your high side is, what the nominal voltage on your low side is, and the uh, tertiary uh, voltage if present. So. All of these are given in kilovolts. You can just go ahead and click on the field and it'll let you manually enter that information. 
Um, also, clicking on the material tab, you'll have the option to choose what material the, the transformer is, what the windings are. Uh, has options for copper and ANSI uh, temperature constants. And in your labels tab, you if you choose, you can change uh, the labels, whether it be A, B, C, if you want to change it to H1, H2, H3, if you want to change it to U, V, W, you can go ahead and do that in the labels tab. And finally, in your notes tab, it's just basically a, a, a blank slate where you can enter I'd like to I like to use it to enter customer information, um, you know, ad, uh, customer address or emails, contact uh, points of contact, that sort of information. You can set it up in the notes section and that and that as well will come out on your CSV file. So uh, so the tap changer. This is I wanted to get into the, the tap changer really quick because here in the definition of the tap changer, you will you could actually tell the 2293 how many taps your transformer has, if any, what your bottom or middle tap is. So usually the bottom you you just you will choose one if you have a tap configuration that starts from one to your X or let's say from one to five. So you start at one and you have a maximum of nine. So he will populate this list that you see here on the left. He'll populate it from one to nine or to whatever the number of positions is. And then with, if you can, I don't know if you can appreciate this symbol, this will actually tell, you have to tell him, tell the 2293, which one of these tap positions is your nominal tap position. So once you do all of that, the instrument will automatically populate the voltages according to the percentage of the tap, whether it be 2.5% for each tap, or you can have the option of doing custom uh, tap, um, you know, custom tap percentages. So basically, so that's defining your your uh, your device. You want to make sure again that you do that right before you start. Uh, getting into your measurements, what, um, and like I said, it will help you speed up a whole bunch of your reporting process later on. So with that said, I want to go ahead and, start and get into our applications, uh, starting with uh, the winding resistance measurement. So winding resistance is uh, a routine test for all manufactured power transformers. In the field, the uh, changes in winding resistance help to identify open windings, shorted turns, loose connections, high contact resistance, and tap changes. So it's a very useful tool. So during this test, what, what's happening is that the instrument will inject a DC current through the winding, and then it'll measure the voltage drop. And then using the algorithm, that is programmed in the in the 2293. He will calculate the resistance of the winding, and it will dis display it. Simple. Um, the 2293 can supply up to 32 amps at 100 volts DC, and it can measure from 0.1 micro ohms all the way up to 300 kilo ohms. And then the accuracies for the for the re the measurements is quite low. So we have 0.1 percent up to 30 K ohms and 1% anywhere between 30 kilo ohms and 300 kilo ohms. So we have very, very good accuracy on your winding, excuse me, on your winding resistance measurements. So about the current, you know, when you're injecting this DC, this DC current, uh, what we, what we're, what we want to achieve is to saturate the core, but the current shouldn't be so high that you also heat up the windings because, as you know, uh, any rise in temperature of the winding will change your resistance measure, uh, values. So you want to use a current that is high enough to saturate the core, but not high enough to heat up the windings. So therefore, uh, ANSI has suggested that for for winding resistance measurements, you use a current that's less than 
of the transformer uh, nominal current. On large inductive objects like transformers, complete core magne uh, magnet magnetization is needed to achieve this a good stable resistance value. And so with the simultaneous winding magnetization method, core saturation is achieved rather quickly. And as a result, measurement times are decreased. So basically we want to get past this red area and get to an, uh, the saturation area where your resistance values will stabilize. And this is done fairly quickly because we are energizing all phases at the same time. We're not doing it phase by phase. So usually you would, if it was phase by phase, you'd have to disconnect, reconnect, try and saturate your core once again, and not, not with the 2293. We have all phases being injected at the same time. And so core magnetization is achieved very quickly. So setting up your winding resistance measurement on the 2293, again, if you haven't already uh, gone through the steps of defining, you would, uh, defining your transformer, you can go ahead and define your configuration of your high voltage winding. You can select the configuration of your low voltage winding and the phase shift. And once you have that in place, you hit the start button and the resistance measurement test will begin. Um, during the test, you will see how he switches phase to phase. And once it's done uh, charging and and uh, measuring the, the phase, it'll go to the next one. And at the end, you will have uh, your display of all your uh, winding resistances per phase. Now, um, you can also choose uh, to not uh, measure certain phases by clicking the phase that you don't want to, to measure. That's also an option. So if you don't, if you just want to measure your high voltage uh, winding resistance uh, phases on your high voltage side, you can go ahead and click on your low voltage uh, windings and it'll deselect them and you can run the test only on your high voltage and vice versa. So, and literally takes just a few minutes, obviously depending on the, the size of the transformer. And again, these measurements will be recorded on the instrument and you can later um, export them onto your CSV file. So pretty straightforward with, uh, with your winding resistance uh, measurement. So uh, after you do your winding resistance measurement is highly suggested that you utilize the demagnetization function. So like I mentioned earlier, this function is standard. It comes with uh, the 2293 standard so because after you power down a, a transformer, it's disconnected from a power grid. Or when you do a winding resistance measurement, which involves DC current, um, the transformer core after this connection is likely to have some remaining magnetism. So th this magnetism will generate high overcurrents when the transformer is reconnected to the grid, which will ultimately produce higher than normal inrush currents. Also, uh, if the core, if it's still, if it still has these re uh, remnant magnetism, it can also affect your other measurements such as uh, a frequent, uh, frequency response analysis or a transformer turns ratio uh, test. So the 2293 includes a fully automatic DMAG feature, which eliminates the magnetic remnant. So the, basically the, what the instrument does is that it will calculate the hysteresis loop using a specialized algorithm, and it uses an, an iterative procedure, it runs several cycles until the instrument detects that DMAC is reached. So basically when um, when you set up your DMAC, you can you will first have to input what current you're going to be uh, using to demagnetize. The the current is usually it's recommended to use at least 
two times the no load loss current of the transformer. Um, in many in many uh, measurements, although the instrument can go to 32 amps, in many cases you won't need much more than 16 amps. Um, 32 amps is for really you know to be used on lower resistances. So you will choose your what amperages you want to use your amps for your DMAG. You'll choose where you're going to inject whether it be your high voltage or low voltage and what leg of the of that winding you want to go ahead and and inject and then you have to define what the completion conditions are so basically the instrument will go through its algorithm and through its uh, the procedure and then will complete the procedure once any one of these conditions is met so you can Tell, you can tell the instrument to put uh, what what number of, of that of that cycle. So you can do a maximum number of cycles. Uh, usually we want to set this up so it's pretty high. Uh, the the manufacturer actually sometimes recommends up to 50 cycles. Uh, as far as the relative residual flux, this is a measure this is the percentage of the initial flux once it's you choose it'll measure the initial flux and then you tell it what percentage of that flux will declare the transformer as demagnetized so here it's good it's good practice to keep that percentage low to to guarantee good results um and then finally this uh, the absolute um the absolute residual flux this will just basically say once you reach this uh, this value, uh, for example, in this example, it says 20 milliwebers. So once it reaches that value, that's when he will declare that the transformer has been properly demagnetized. And again, any any one of these any one of these completion conditions that is achieved first will be will be the the trigger to uh to the instrument to tell it to, that the dmag has been completed so even if you set a high percentage on your relative uh, residual flux if it achieves uh, an abs your absolute residual flux value before five percent it'll shut down or if it goes through all the cycles it'll do that if it first goes through all 20 cycles it'll do that that's why cycles should be kept high so you can um, actually let the instrument uh, do its completion on the on the flux value that is being measured so basically it'll go through your current in injection it'll be it'll it'll show you a bar of how what where your 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 flux is and then at the end once it's completed once the completion conditions are met you will have a clear indication that your transformer has been demagnetized. And then once you have a demagnetized uh, transformer, you can go ahead and do other tests, the other tests that are that the 2293 can offer, which use the AC, uh, an AC power supply. So one of these tests and a very popular uh, test for transformers is the turns ratio uh, test. So in the in the turns ratio test, the AC power supply that's integrated in the 2293 allows full automatic measurement of turns and voltage ratio, ratio deviation. It'll it'll give you your phase displacement and your excitation current of your transformer. It'll do all three of these values, your voltage ratio, your phase displacement and your um, excitation current. And so how that looks when you choose your turns ratio application, the active window will change to the one that you're seeing on the screen. And so here you will have your, your device already defined. And then all you would have to do is basically hit start and he will go through the cycle. Now, before you hit start, you may want to you can you can choose to there's a many options 
to choose for your setup uh, for your turns ratio measurement. Um, you can specify your tap changer, like we like I mentioned earlier, with your nominal voltages and your frequency. You can in the general in this general tab. This is a tap definition. This is where you, according to the values that you put under the nominal uh, voltage and the percentages that you specify on your tap changer, he will automatically populate your your voltage um, levels for each tap. Um, also, you can you can choose where the taps are. If you're going to be testing just a single tap, all the taps, or your nominal and your top and bottom, that could all be um, that could all be specified uh, with your in the tap control. And then also you can specify which what the test voltage for the turns ratio uh, would be. Now you. If you notice here uh, in test under test voltage, this uh, AC supply that's integrated into the 2293 has a maximum voltage of 67 volts, which is um, which is un I'm not want to say unusual, but uh, it's not common. Usually with uh, transformer turns ratio or TTRs, you'll have uh, 100 volts or or 250 volts, but since again, since we have this simultaneous uh, winding magnet uh, mag uh, magnetization function, and we're basically injecting on on the core and the windings all at once, we are able to use a lower voltage of 67 volts and achieve the same or the same results with basically with the accuracy that you know same accuracy and same result that a 250 volt um, turns ratio meter would get. So we'll, we're able to keep it at a voltage level, which is not dangerous and still achieve uh, very good measurements. So after you go through a measurement cycle, you, uh, the, you will you'll get a, um, an indication that your device is safe and you will have per phase your raw ratio It'll give you your voltage ratio, any deviations in percent, your phase displacement between phases, and your and your uh, excitation currents. In an excitation current, uh, usually you'll see one that's higher and and uh, two others that are uh, pretty similar. That's that's pretty normal. So and then. Again, once it's done, once the test is done, it's automatically saved in uh, in under the the test name, and it is readily available to export to your USB. So with uh, with your TTR function, we have this neat little uh, application that uh, is called, which is the automatic winding connection detection or vector group detection. So basically with this uh, application, if you don't have uh, nameplate data or say you go to the field and you find yourself with a transformer that does that you basically don't have any information on, maybe rather than just the primary and secondary voltages. So this will aid you in defining your, your uh, vector group and your winding configuration. So what it does is it, it it'll energize the the transformer. It'll start detecting and it'll give you this grid. And as you can see, the grid has on the top your all your high voltage configuration and star, delta, or zigzag. And on the left, you have your low voltage, your possible low voltage configurations. And so he'll start eliminating. Uh, he'll start measuring and eliminating. As you see, it starts out with a full green grid. And it'll slowly start turning off the, gr the green boxes that correspond to different combinations. It'll eliminate the non uh, matching vector groups. And then at the end, it will basically give you a it, it'll give you the remaining possibilities of what the most probable configuration of that transformer is. Um, so 
in this example, if you can see that there's this one, the first can this yellow configuration is a zigzag neutral on the high and a Y on the low. And it's in yellow because it's saying, well, it's possible, but uh, usually if you have a zigzag transformer, you know it. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a very helpful tool if you don't know what your transformer winding configuration is. Um, it'll help you, you know, kind of, uh, you know, narrow it down to uh, what your possibilities are. So now uh, another application that is offered with the 2293 is uh, the measurement of dynamic resistance or or tap changer control. So basically, the dynamic resistance test it consists of uh, recording currents and voltages during the tap position transition. So a standard curve. So you, what the instrument will do is it'll give you a standard curve, like the one that you see on the screen. And basically, the curve has will it'll start at the the, the tap of the current tap position where you'll see a stable value. Once it starts to move, and remember, this operation is in milliseconds. So once it starts to move, it'll detect when the current drops. Depending on the position of the tap as it goes through the motion, and then once it gets to the next tap, it'll show you the curve as it stabilizes back to uh, to a normal um, current. So uh, you will get the instrument is able to plot this graph. And that way you can, if you see any anomalies with this, with that curve, you can go ahead and start thinking about uh, looking at your tap changer uh, and see if, if it has any problems with oils that may be between the, 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 the taps and, and whatnot. So it'll help you detect any uh, mechanical uh, anomalies on your tap changer. So basically you would uh, click your start button and he'll go through the tap positions. Again, if you use the tap, the automatic tap changer control cable, uh, the instrument is able to do it automatically without the intervention of, uh, of an operator. Um, so it'll charge and stabilize each tap. Uh, if you choose to, to measure the resistance per tap, you, you can choose that as well. And then once it's finished with one tap, it'll go to the next either automatically or you can or the the operator can choose to manually change the tap and then you can hit the button to go to your next tap position. So you can basically do a complete tap changer um, in very little time. Uh, another. Another good application that uh, is offered with the 2293 is our magnetic balance uh, application. The magnetic balance test is commonly used on three phase transformers, and it's used to detect faults in the core and to verify the imbalance in the magnetic circuit and identify interturn faults. So this test is performed by applying voltage on one phase on either one of the legs of the transformer, and then reading the voltage on the other two phases. So, for example, if you choose to apply voltage in your middle leg, the voltage that is measured on either side should give you half of what you applied on the middle, and that'll help you uh, determine whether your flux is is uh, correct. So you have half and half on each leg, or you can choose uh, in this configuration to do either either one of the, the side legs and then you'll have voltage measurements that will equal two thirds and one third of that applied voltage. And then any. And so you it should it should the graphs should turn out more or less like this several several parameters influence the distribution, but the voltage is must be similarly similarly distributed between each limb or each phase of the transformer. So if you do it in the middle, you should have one bar in the middle and equal distribution on either side. 
or if you do it on the on the left or on one of the sides, you should have this sort of distribution where you have two thirds and one third, and that'll indicate good magnetic balance of of your transformer. So basically, this is the screen after a uh, that the twenty two nine. I know it's kind of blurry. Bear with me. Uh, this is the screen that you'll get, and it'll show you the graph. And if he detects that there is a voltage level that is uh, questionable, it will display it with a with a question mark, and that way you. And also, that's one parameter that you can define. You can define what percentage difference, and so he he'll indicate any problems with uh, the magnetic balance according to your um, your definition of what your deviation or what your the difference between voltages should be. So that's a very again very useful in determining the the health of your transformer. Um, and I think this is the last one we're going to be going through, which is a short circuit uh, impedance test. The short circuit impedance test will measure the impedance the impedance of the transformer once it's in short circuit. This is the only test where you'll actually remove the low voltage winding and you'll replace uh, the connections on the low voltage bushings. You'll have to short them, um, and then usually it's done with. Uh, I've seen it done with bars. It, sometimes it's done with uh, heavy gauge cables, uh, depending all obviously depending on the on the current that is that could be produced in your secondary. So it depends on the size. But you basically disconnect the low voltage uh, measurement cables, keep your high voltage on, and you run your short circuit uh, impedance test. And so this is uh, basically what it will look like. Your, the 2293 automatically performs the short circuit impedance test at reduced voltages uh, on your power distribution transformer, and it will calculate the three phase equivalent short circuit impedance so that you can go ahead and compare that with your nameplate uh, data. So um, again, just another way to, uh, it's a good measure to uh, compare and uh, make sure that your transformer is healthy. Um, I said this was the final one, but I, I I forgot that we also, I just want to quickly go through, I know we're running a little late. I uh, want to go through heat the heat run function. Basically, it has uh, the heat run or heat test or temperature rise test is formed by applying a rated voltage of uh, and a rated voltage and frequency on the primary side. Then you have your your secondary short circuit. So if for this test, obviously the 2293 can't supply rated voltage. So you would connect your uh, uh, voltage supply to your primary, uh, get it nice and hot, and then after, and, and with your temperature to, uh, probes, you'll be able. What the 2293 becomes is basically a temperature uh, recording uh, system. And then after you do your heat rise. Uh, uh, the resistance is then measured after you disconnect. You quickly disconnect your your supply and you measure your resistance. And then the values of the average temperature of the two windings are determined from the resistance change along the time known as cooling curve. So basically, once it's disconnected, it's really hot. You go ahead and hook up your your uh, measurement cables uh, again, and you start to record this cooling curve. It'll give you the resistance. It, it will calculate the temperature according to how the change in in your resistance. And so that this is sort of what your uh, temperature rise test would look like. So you'll have defined here your your temperatures for your each one of your probes and then the the color uh, the corresponding color on your graph as the transformer heats up. And over here, your cooling curve is actually will again. You can define how many measurement points you want as it cools, how many uh, resistance measurements it'll take, and what the interval between each resistance measurement will be. And that'll give you a curve you know, that will produce your curve for the cooling of the transformer. So that that's basically uh, all the applications 
possible applications. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, information that um, that is found on in the user manual that will help you also. Uh, obviously, I, I can't get into all the information in this webinar session, but if you have any questions or any comments, of course, uh, like I said, you can put them in the chat or in the Q&A section and we'll get to them. Um, so basically, finally, before we get into questions and answers, if there's any questions, I uh, just want to pull up the technical spec specification to reiterate um, our our, tech, our technical specs uh, for resistance. Like I mentioned, your maximum of 32 amps at 100 volts with your different ranges and accuracies. Your for your ratio measurements again, your you have up to 67 volts uh, RMS with your ranges and your accuracies. And your temperature, uh, the temperature probe information, which uh, is just standard PT100 uh, class A temperature probe. So you can have up to 200 uh, degrees Celsius uh, on your temperatures measurements. So, so basically that's all that I have as far as the presentation. Um, 